Hello everyone, it's your local historian and welcome back to another video. This is a special video for me because it's my first doing a voiceover for the channel. So I figure with that monumentous occasion, I'd start out with a history of the R.J. Corman. So the R.J. Corman started in 1973 as a means of cleaning up rail accidents. R.J. Corman started with nothing more than a backhoe and grew this railroad into a 17-line empire that still goes strong today. So let's peel back the layers and see how they did all this in just 50 years. It all starts with a man by the name of Rick Corman who grew up in poverty in backwater Kentucky. His father worked for the county, but this was barely enough money to give him and his sister their daily lunch money. So when Rick Corman grew up, he went to work for the railroad with his uncle, and this is where the remarkable achievements of the man take place. He learned how to take a backhoe and climb it up and into gondolas to grab big heavy creosote ties out of the cars. And this is when the construction wing of the R.J. Corman Railroad began. Cash was tight, as the 1970s was in an economic stagflation. So it was difficult for daily operations to take place. But Rick Corman was persistent. He did not give up on his vision. And he worked endlessly to make sure that his vision was achieved. He was noted for having an incredible sense of humor and having determination to match. This is where an important figure in the R.J. Corman Railroad story comes in. A man by the name of Luther Deaton. This man is a banker. And one day, Rick Corman comes to him and says, I need money. Would you lend me that money? And Luther was skeptical. But Rick Corman was nonetheless undeterred. Luther got a call one day, and it was Rick Corman saying, come and see what I do. There was a 65 car derailment in a tunnel, a coal train. And Rick Corman cleared that at 2.30 in the morning, allowing the trains to keep rolling. But the monetary problems didn't end there. Rick Corman couldn't make payroll for the first year. Luther telling him this, saying, I'm going to lose my job if this keeps up. Corman responded, saying, Eh, you'll have a job. You'll come over here and work on the railroad gang. By 1982, the company was growing. Construction, repair, and derailment cleanup were the bulk of the company's revenue streams. And the railroads would contract this business out to the Corman Company because it was cheaper. Before this, the railroads did everything themselves. But the Corman Company came in and did things better for cheaper. It's what they did. Rick Corman's company grew in other ways. It was around this time that the Stackers Rail Act was passed. This allowed the Class 1 railroads to spin off their unprofitable lines to short line operators such as Rick Corman. Rick Corman was privileged with this position through dedicated hard work, grit and determination, and rose above the fray and his competitor. He started his short line business with two short lines, one in Memphis and one in Bardstown. This was also around the same time that the R.J. Corman dinner train began operations. The monetary concerns for the company were now over. 
the money was flowing in, and Rick Corman went from begging to the bank to owning the building the bank was in. Rick Corman left a profound impact on everyone he met. Democrat Governor Steve Bashir remarked that he had a big heart, and Republican Senator Mitch McConnell remarked that he was one of the most impressive people he's ever met. From businessmen to politicians to employees, everyone had good things to say about him. His employees were particularly fond of him for taking care of them. Instances where somebody's house burned down and they had three kids, he'd make sure they'd have a bed to sleep in that night. When someone had cancer in the family, he would make sure to help them. When he would go out to eat, he had a bag of a hundred dollar bill that he would hand out to everyone who served him. By the 1990s, R.J. Corman was a considerable company purchasing the Central Kentucky Lines from CSX, a former Chesapeake and Ohio line running through Frankfurt and Lexington. This line operates from Lexington, Kentucky to Osborne Yard through trackage rights with CSX. This offers the rail fan a lot of variety on the Louisville-Cincinnati line. In downtown Louisville, in the U of L campus, there is a couple of railroad diamonds operated by CSX and Norfolk Southern. This gives one of the most variety-rich environments featured anywhere in the country. The Paducah in Louisville also operates in this area as well. Rick Corman also purchased a steam locomotive, nicknamed Old Smokey, a QJ Class 2102, built in China in the 1980s. This locomotive was donated to the Irvine Museum of Transportation and currently resides with Kentucky Steam Corporation in Ravana. Hopefully someday this locomotive will return to service. In other news, 2023 marked 50 years for the company, and it also marked the acquisition of brand new EMD locomotives for the Central Kentucky Line. Can't wait to see the next 50 years of the company and how it continues to grow. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike. If you really hated it, please leave a comment. I can't wait to hear your criticism. But. That's all I have time for today, folks. This is your local historian.